This is CBC Here and Now. People who have been thinking about retiring for some time are probably, it's my hunch, quicker to respond. Frankly, we're a little bit puzzled at the approach that's being taken. Tonight, Memorial University offers buyouts to entice retirements as the university deals with financial problems. <laughs> Can I have one of your fries? Just one? Thank you. On the rest of your uh, 265 dips, you're never going to see me here again. We'll have a little bit of a recap for you coming up in just a little bit. Debbie? So many fun memories, but tonight we say farewell to our favorite meteorologist. After 10 wonderful years, this is Ryan Snodden's last show before he takes his talents to CBC in Halifax. We have some special plans for him tonight, and you won't want to miss it. Good evening, I'm Debbie Cooper. And I'm Carolyn Stokes. There was shock around the world and here at home today. Anthony Bourdain, the celebrity chef who recently brought a CNN show to Newfoundland, took his own life. Through his years on TV and through his writing, Bourdain helped create the bad boy image of the modern chef. And his show in Newfoundland now stands as one of the last chapters in his storied career. Here and now, Zach Audi has more. Nothing fancy, just the bare essentials. To many people, Anthony Bourdain had the best job in the world. Go anywhere, meet anyone, eat everything. When he brought his show to Newfoundland, food and culture buffs swooned, the ultimate validation from the worldliest traveler of them all. Our own most famous chef, Jeremy Charles, hosted Bourdain for much of his Newfoundland adventure. It seems like yesterday he was here and we were out having a great time and, and uh, you know, discovering the lay of the land and, and uh, there was no indication or any, I mean, it's the last thing you'd think of, you know, but uh, I'm really happy and proud of the fact that he came here and, and again, got a chance to see Newfoundland. Other members of St. John's fine dining family joined Charles in their grief. On Instagram, tributes poured out from Mallard Cottage, from the Adelaide Oyster House, from Chinched. For chefs, Bourdain was a hero, the guy who helped transform the profession from a working class job to a glamorous career. He really put chefs up there on a pedestal, you know, and really kind of carved an identity where we weren't just cooks and chefs, we're like, you know, true people <laughs> doing magical things in the kitchen and, uh, you know, hats off to him for that. So. Bourdain also left his mark on the world of media. His TV shows practically invented the reality travel genre. He was a person who seemed to have it all until this morning. Mental illness, suicide, depression, anxiety, it doesn't discriminate. You know, we're all, we all have mental health, just like we have physical health. And you can have everything and develop serious physical illnesses, and you can have everything and develop, you know, mental health issues. And it's just really, really important that everyone know that there is help. No matter what a person's circumstances is, there's always hope that things can get better. Zach Gowdy, CBC News, St. John's. Cash Strap Memorial University is dangling a big financial carrot over the heads of older faculty members, all part of a bid to encourage them to retire. Munn hopes the voluntary program will lead to long-term savings and more opportunities for young faculty members. But as here now's Terry Roberts reports, not everyone is on board. We're into a kind of dark, challenging place. That's how Munn Vice President Noreen Golfman describes the financial turmoil at Munn, a shrinking government grant, limited opportunities to increase revenues. With a tight, restrictive budget and with most of our costs being fixed in salaries, that's, you know, obviously where the savings would be. So Munn is targeting its older workers, profs and staff, a pot of $8 million offering up to a year's salary to those who qualify. It would be great if we could all just keep 
paying very high salaries at the high end for people who are 71 and over or 68 and over, but it's really not practical given our situation right now. The offer ends July 20th. No word yet on how many might go, but about three dozen faculty members are over 70 years of age, collecting both a pension and their salary of 150000 and higher. The union representing faculty workers believes the money could be better spent. We think that putting that $8 million into deferred maintenance would have immediately made this campus a safer place for faculty and students and other employees. MUNFA has repeatedly called on the university to establish a program that allows faculty members to ease their way into retirement, ensuring an orderly transition. Instead, we've got this one-time, all-or-nothing deal, which we don't think is going to appeal to all that many faculty members and really leaves uh, departments in alert. So what's going to happen in departments where perhaps all of a sudden multiple members are saying, sorry, we're not going to be here now, we're taking this, this payout. But the Vice President of Academics says inaction is not an option. Cost cutting is unavoidable and scholarly renewal is also necessary. The job market has really seized up for people who are freshly minted PhDs because with the, um, the, the relaxing or dropping of mandatory retirement, what had been promised to a lot of people when they were in graduate program hasn't come to materialize. Jobs haven't opened up. Terry Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Leaders of Indigenous groups from across the province gathered in Corner Brook today. This is the second annual roundtable where leaders spend a day hashing out the issues. Today, leaders discussed mental health initiatives, a new cultural plan for the province, and the repatriation of Beothic remains. Government hopes to bring these leaders together again next year for similar discussions. Also announced in Cornerbrook today, Indigenous students from this province are guaranteed two spots at the University of Saskatchewan's law school program. Starting in 2020, two qualified college students will get a $100,000 law degree each year, along with articling work with the Department of Justice when they return. The provincial government is partnering with Indigenous leaders to help promote the program. When we talk about our legal system, we have challenges. And the fact is that the only way to change the system is to be a part of that system. And that's been consistent, not just in my meetings here in the province. When I go to federal meetings, everybody's having the same challenge. So having this base of knowledge will help them no matter whether they practice, practice administrative law, if they're dealing with land claims, or if they're dealing with criminal law. They're, this background is going to help them, uh, I, I think, be better lawyers. And it's an opportunity that's being applauded by Indigenous lawyers in the province, especially Judy White, who attended the Saskatchewan Law Program. Up until 1951, First Nation people couldn't hire a lawyer, let alone be a lawyer. So this is a big day, and it's a big day for not only Indigenous people, but the fact that the government of Newfoundland and Labrador has taken the step. I, I think it's great. Well, as you can see, Ryan is joining us here on the set uh, to start his last show, mm -hmm. Rundown of the Weather, and you delivered a nice day to go out yeah, on. <laughs> absolutely. Too bad the forecast wasn't as nice as the day. Uh, we are watching some showers tracking in, but uh, uh, for the weekend, unfortunately. But a little bit of sunshine in the mix, too, and what a day. What a start oh, to the day. Uh, I want to start with this uh, fantastic picture. Mick Fian in Melrose. Now, Mick mentioned, uh, you know, he, he posts pictures on my Facebook page from, uh, from time to time, says this will probably be one of the last. I hope that's not the case. I hope that you folks that have been posting pictures to my Facebook page continue to do so, even after I'm in uh, Nova Scotia, uh, and uh, I will continue to share them uh, from time to time as well. So a uh, beautiful shot there for Mick. Thank you very much uh, for Melrose. And Across Newfoundland, we have been seeing uh, the radars down at, at Marble Mountain, but we are watching showers tracking into western Newfoundland right now. Uh, those will push eastward tonight through central into eastern Newfoundland. Pretty unsettled in Labrador today. Showers and, yeah, that'll mix to a few flurries tonight as temperatures drop. This will be the main weather player over the next 24 hours for sure. It will the Most of the action will roll out as we roll into the Saturday time period, uh, but a bit drier for Sunday. Labrador stays a little more on the unsettled side and will, of course, break down your weekend forecast in complete detail coming up in just a few minutes. 
About 100 campers are scrambling since the city of St. John's shut down Cochrane Pond Campground yesterday. This after fire and safety issues were flagged by St. John's Regional Fire Department. Campers were given three days to clear out. Many reportedly stay at the campground year round. This afternoon, some of those people met with Mayor Danny Breen. The meeting went well. We're going to let the powers that be do what they need to do to get things started. And uh, basically, we cannot come back here at night until the two main objectives are fulfilled, which would be the widening of the road and the secondary road. Until then, the park will remain closed. A lawsuit has been filed over a serious incident at the Muskrat Falls site two years ago. The main contractor, Staldi, is suing a U.S. company for negligence. This was the scene in 2016. A concrete formwork collapsed during construction of the Muskrat Falls powerhouse. One worker was sent to hospital and others received first aid treatment. Now at the time, senior NALCOR officials called it a very, very serious incident. Last week, Astaldi sued a company from Kansas for damages, blaming it for the collapse. Those allegations have not been proven in court. Steve Bragg has been ordered to stand trial for first-degree murder. The 36-year-old is accused of killing Victoria Head in St. John's last year. Her body was found in a field off Oxen Pond Road in November. Police have said Bragg and Head knew each other. Details from Bragg's preliminary inquiry can't be released due to a publication ban. He'll likely enter a plea in Supreme Court this September. For now, he remains in custody. A man who was acquitted of murdering his estranged wife has been found guilty of assaulting a former girlfriend. The verdict against Ray Newman was handed down in court this afternoon in St. John's. Here now's Glenn Payette has the story. In September of last year, Ray Newman is accused of doing this and this to his former girlfriend, Nicole Young, at his home in Paradise. They had both been drinking. Newman testified that Young had jumped on him when he was asleep and began punching him and he pushed her off. But Judge David Orr said Young's injuries made her version of events more credible. Young had told the court that Newman pushed her up against a wall and choked her and that he also dragged her down a hall in the house. Orr said he didn't believe Newman and found him guilty of assault. On hand today were members of Chrissy Predden Newman's family, Newman's estranged wife, who was brutally killed in 2007. Newman was charged with the murder, but in 2012, a judge ruled that Newman's rights had been violated and the case never got the trial. Today, Chrissy Predden Newman's uncle, Bruce Harvey, wore a Stop Violence Against Women shirt to court. I'm very happy with the decision, you know, but it's a... It's a... It's a very emotional time because I'm thinking a lot about Chrissy. Harvey has spoken out about violence against women and says today's verdict is a win. It's a small step, but there's somebody has been held accountable. There's been a there's there's been a, 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 a an act an act of violence towards a woman, and somebody is being held accountable. And he was afraid it might have gone the other way. This has been one of the, my most frightening times coming in here today. Why? Because I could, I could almost feel the numbness of the judge saying, I'm sorry, there's not enough evidence, and you're free to walk again. And Newman is free for the moment. Newman was not taken into custody after the guilty verdict. He'll be sentenced June 27th. Glenn Pay at CBC News, St. John's. One lucky St. John's couple turned a couple of these into a couple of million. I'm Stephen Miller, and I'll have the story coming up on Here and Now. How do I look?
Welcome back. Really? I mean, did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? <laughs> I couldn't miss Ryan's goodbye. I took the day Ryan. off. I thought, something's happening today. So, oh, Ryan, Ryan. Yeah. Right, so. Can't Thanks. miss How's it. it going? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, on your day off, that means a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's going well, uh, although the show's really just getting started, so okay. we'll have to see. <clears throat> but it's been a busy day for you. Absolutely. You've been, uh, you did radio this morning, and of course, everyone wants to talk to you about your last day. And Yeah. yeah I'm not saying very much because... I don't want to cry. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. Uh, we have 45 minutes almost to get through, so we better, uh, we better uh, yeah, tread lightly here. Mm -hmm. okay. Emotional day. Yeah. Why don't you have a look at this? Uh-oh. Welcome back to Here and Now. All right, Ryan, we're hearing about those warm temperatures somewhere in the province, but where are they? It certainly isn't very warm right here. No, it's definitely not uh, been a warm day on the Avalon. Just getting to eight degrees in St. John's. Take a look at what's going about on. About right ten so years ago, I can still remember how his forecast rarely made me What does that mean for the Avalon? Northeasterly winds, cloud cover and yeah, slight chance we'd ask for that weekend. And he'd say no. Then he'd hit us with that charming smile. But February made me shiver. With every forecast he delivered. Pretty good gust right there. Now he says he's leaving. At first, I didn't believe him. When we read it, we all cried. He leaves us now with his kids and bride. Now we all feel sad inside. I'm tracking this warm front, which is bringing in snow, ice pellets, freezing rain. Hi, Beachy Cove! So bye-bye, here and now's weather guy. We're all grieving, Ryan's leaving, Debbie can't dry her eyes. For ten great years, we've had him by our side. But now it's time to say our goodbyes. Now it's time to say our goodbyes. Out of war! Look, a whale right there. Tough gig today. We get to jump on board and hunt for icebergs. I've got my hands full here anyway. What happens if you swallow half the pool? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nova Scotia. Come on, I'll show you around. You're going to Halifax. I want to show you the weather center. Oh, yeah, for sure. So me in my tracks, but maybe with the No, no, and it's not, you're not looking for me. It's all we've got. There's no sunshine. So bye-bye, here and now's weather guy. We're all grieving, Ryan's leaving, Debbie can't dry her eyes for 10 grand. Time to say our goodbye. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday. See ya. Thanks for having me. Yay. Oh, what a great I huge think shout out. that shows that you didn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> you I, just had fun. I, it's true. It's true. I did have a lot of fun. Took 10 years off and had a vacation in Newfoundland so, uh, and Labrador. We uh, want to thank Gary Quigley, by the way, our editor who put that all together, yeah. and our talent. Yes, Vicki Mullally. Yes, mm -hmm. Amazing right. job. You certainly yeah. got around in your decades. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Fantastic. I, and uh, just seeing it all back there, uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Gary and uh, Vicki. That was great. Well, we have to move on to a really happy story. Yes. When it comes to scratch tickets, big lottery wins are rare, but one St. John's couple has turned a few dollars into $2.5 million. That'd be wow. a nice parting <laughs> gift. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's... Ryan did not scratch a <laughs> ticket today. And you know, that's the biggest win in Atlantic Canada's history. 
Mm -hmm. And here now, Stephen Miller has this great story. <laughs> they have won the largest scratch and win prize ever awarded by Atlantic Lottery, and they have such a special story. A very special story. One that started far away from this stage in St. John's. Meet Angelina Lado. She just made history with her husband Edward by winning $2.5 million on a scratch ticket. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was screaming, oh my God. <laughs> I was screaming and then I say, what can I do? Run to the store? I say, no, I call my husband and I say, he say hello, I say, oh my God. He was like, what's going on? I say, oh my God. Edward didn't believe her at first, but when the news sunk in, the couple and their children were beyond excited. Oh my God, I feel happy. <laughs> They moved to Canada from South Sudan 14 years ago, and it's been a long journey. But now, with their winnings, they're going back to Africa, to Uganda, to find Edward's mother. She's in a refugee camp there, but Edward hasn't seen her since he was an infant. The couple is also donating money locally, like to the Janeway, where one of their kids has had treatment. We have four kids. Like I have to plan some money for them for education, and I like to buy a car and maybe house. <laughs> Many people, myself included, had no idea you could win so much on these tickets. But now that I do, well, you'll have to excuse me. Stephen Miller, CBC News, St. John's. It was a beautiful day for World Oceans Day. These students from Bishop Field enjoyed the morning on Middle Cove Beach. But will it stay nice for the weekend? Ryan's got the details coming up. Do you like your action? That's a question that many people will be asking at the Rock House this weekend as the popular St. John's Rock Trio Fur Packed Action have reunited for one weekend only. I'm Jeremy and I'll have that story coming up.
Uh, oh, right off the top. Well, uh, nah, I can't say well. How about the next three or four months? For a three month summer preview, I'm inviting you to come check out my brand new weather blog. It's called NL Weather 24 7. This is a, a very nice watermelon, yes. but we got a couple seeds here. We do. So we're going to go ahead and let's see who can spit the seeds the furthest. Gotcha. Okay, ready? Oh, the wind really caught uh, that. That's, oh. that's pathetic, <laughs> Snodgy. That was, that was pathetic. 20 feet? That's, 20 a, feet? that's a good little... 20 feet. 20 feet. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. So did I. You beat the watermelon queen. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. I, was, that line, was that line on his resume that got him the Halifax job? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Won a watermelon spitting contest at one time. <laughs> and I love my state-of-the-art weather blog that I was uh, I love your hair. To, uh, <laughs> hair. Yeah. Well, you know, something that's happening after you leave, we have to have a replacement. Mm -hmm. And there have been all kinds of auditions. Mm -hmm. And resumes and people who want to be the next Ryan Snodden. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Some familiar faces even. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. This is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> Where's the clicker? OK, this one. Woo! Hold on, how do we, can I go back? Oh my god, the weather needs me. Woo! Hi, I'm Alan Hocko. So over here you got, um, uh, uh, uh. Oh my god, this is awesome, look at that. What? Yeah, I think they look great on TV. <laughs> I'm Melissa Royal. And I'm her fiance, Mark Rich. And where we just got engaged, I'm looking for some full-time work for him. I'm engaged. I'm single. Hi, I'm Alan Doyle. Uh, I'm here to audition to be the new weatherman on Here and Now. He's coming in. No, no, he's the way it's got to be. First problem is, look at that there. Where's the Petty Harbor? I don't really know where. I should be your new Carl Wells. Petty Harbor is getting on this map. If I get this gig, I'm telling you right now. The Capelin are rolling here, as you can see. This is pretty good. What happens if you push this play button? Whoa! 40 degrees in Cartwright. For the first time ever, get your flip-flops out. Sunshine all over the northeast. <laughs> There's going to be some sun eventually in Newfoundland. Here's your 365-day long-range forecast. Crap. It's going to be crap. Saturday at 6 o'clock in the morning. There's no one awake at 6 o'clock in the morning, so don't even, don't even pay attention to this. You'll be in bed. We should name our band Rain Drizzle and Fog, and you can be Fog. <laughs> if you're upset about the weather, it's not going to change. Uh, go downtown, get drunk, 100% chance of precipitation, and you'll be happy. Oh, look, fog. Well, it looks like it's going to be rain, drizzle, and fog for the next week. No, no, I'm, no, no, I'm out of here. The only person that takes more heat in this province than the Premier is a weather forecaster. I'm out of here. No change in the weather. There's no change in me. We don't want Ryan to leave, but he can't live for free. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm cut out for this, man. We could do this. We could do this. Easy. I'm doing the weather. Weather job. Do not pay any attention to any of this. Yeah. Right. I'm going to be sad to see Ryan go. I'm very Whatever sad to see Ryan, Ryan go. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> Hire them all on a rotation. That's right, a different yeah. one every night. Uh, it sounds good to me. Oh, thanks to everybody who came in to do yeah, that. Nice. Excellent that job. That was so nice. Uh, fantastic. Thanks, yeah, again, thanks to everybody who came in. Uh, I had uh, uh, a slight suspicion that some of that was going on. I had no idea there were so many, though. <laughs> and, the the yeah, and the premier. And the premier. Yeah, I love how he did give the shout out, though, that nobody takes more yeah. heat. That's true. It's the weather. So true. He, he was attracted by that big red L that you use on your map. So oh, below. Sucked him in. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. It was. And I love that uh, everybody got a chance to use this clicker. And it was a little um, uh, showcase of how difficult it is to figure out how not to so do easy. the yeah, graphics. Yeah, it's not right? as easy so, as it looks. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm going to try and top that with 
the weather forecast because uh, <laughs> we do have to talk about the weekend. Uh, but as uh, Mark and Alan and Alan and the Anna sisters and everybody in the Premier said, uh, uh, everyone was talking about the, the rain drizzle and the fog, and we're going to see a little bit of that this weekend. Let's have a look at your current temperatures. It is 18 degrees in Gander, 14 in St. John's, 17 in uh, Badger right now. So, uh, yeah, not too bad for this time of year in uh, Central 12 in Happy Valley Goose Bay, uh, 17 in Cartwright. Not quite the 40 Tom was talking about, but uh, not half bad either uh, for 17 degrees this time of year. Winds in from the south, and so what that will mean for tonight uh, is this low works into this into the region. Southerly flow means uh, temperatures are going to be quite mild. You don't have to worry about any of those uh, frost sensitive plants if you do have any out. Again, radar is down at Marble Mountain, and so these greens that you see ending here around the port of port, those do continue to move up into western Newfoundland, and that is rain in the form of showers and that will continue to track into central and then eastern Newfoundland through this evening. Here's your timeline. Uh, future tracker shows those showers will move in for, through this evening by 4 or 5 a.m. on the doorstep for Metro. If you are an early, early riser, you may be rain free, but uh, showers moving in pretty early tomorrow morning when uh, most of us are waking up and you can see where uh, we are starting damp from central to west and we will see a few wet flurries mixing in in places like Labrador City and towards the north coast. As we work throughout the day tomorrow, we're going to be seeing those flurry chances mixing down further down the coast towards Makovic uh, and as we roll into the afternoon, we're talking about while it will be clearing out in central, it looks like another line of showers will pop up. So you folks that will see the sun likely popping out for a little bit, be mindful that we will see another line working through the central Newfoundland region towards the northeast coast through Saturday afternoon into the Saturday evening time period. The Avalon looks pretty cloudy and damp from start to finish. Temperatures will be around 10 degrees. Should get to 12, uh, 10 or 12 degrees Bonavista to Clarenville. Uh, Mid-teens central, again, Showers clear, bit of sun, and then those shower chances will return, though they will be more scattered in nature. West Coast will also likely see a little bit of sunshine moving in into the afternoon. Pretty unsettled, pretty cool for Labrador. Three degrees from Nain to Makovic, but uh, milder in the south with a bit of a southerly flow. Uh, temperatures in that 9 to 12 degree range, and maybe even a little bit of afternoon sun for Labrador City. And as we walk our timeline forward here, you can see where Labrador uh, west, not looking too bad for Sunday. I think we'll see a mainly cloudy day. Uh, Sunday in the eastern parts of Labrador, still talking about the chance of looking at a few wet flurries. And into the rest of Newfoundland, we're talking about a mainly cloudy day. Isolated shower chances for the north coast, central, and the northeast. St. John's, the Avalon, not ruling it out. 30 to 40% range, but not until the later parts of Sunday. More like uh, this time of day and into the evening. So keep that in mind. But again, Temperatures, certainly better than uh, three, four degrees. That is your weekend forecast, and we'll talk about uh, your long-range forecast and what next week holds coming up in a few minutes. Debbie? Thank you, Ryan. Well, after seven years, the popular St. John's band Fur Packed Action has reunited for three shows this weekend. The band has released its 1998 album, this time on vinyl. Here now is Jeremy Eaton caught up with them earlier today. <laughs> Why did you want to reunite for one weekend, Jeff? Mm. Mm, tough mm. question. Mm. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah uh, right. Doug Ford, I think. We felt bad. We knew it was coming, so we thought people would need it. I don't know, man. I, I just got asked. Uh, I heard there was going to be records, too. 20th anniversary reissue. Wow. Yeah. So we made 20 copies oh of it, so God. you'll be lucky because we're keeping 15 of them between us. We didn't remaster it, uh, but it sounds better than the CD. There's no denying it that. It has stuff on it that's yeah. uh, that's not on the CD. Yeah. It's got stuff that or, we were or, or doing. bonus tracks. Yep. Yeah, stuff that we stuff that we didn't release. So th people that uh, songs that people will know, but uh, but uh, un unreleased stuff. So and it sounds yeah. like a record. It sounds yeah. warm and full. And great. But I mean, every band is kind of like a soundtrack to a scene, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool when, you know, we were like, wow, this would be kind of, you know, we haven't played in a long time. This would be, this would be really cool to do. And then to get that reaction and to kind of see that everyone has that feeling of like, yeah, so the scene coming together, like, yay, we're going to go and be a part of this again. You know, we're older, you know, but we're still in the game and stuff. So that's a that's a really thrilling thing. So I think it's going to be a really a, a real joyous thing for everybody.
just being in the same room, doing the songs, you've done them so many times, we toured so much together, we experienced so much together, we always end up doing more talking than uh, rehearsing. That is true. So, yeah, yeah it's expect, enjoyable. Ex expect that same thing tonight, more talking than music. <laughs> Welcome back to Here and Now. The Masonic Temple in St. John's is undergoing renovations, and last night we told you about some of the challenges Spirit of Newfoundland is facing. Well, tonight we're going to take you on a tour of some of the secrets inside. Here's Megan Kwan. You've probably passed by this building countless times, but have you dared to go in? The Spirit of Newfoundland bought the temple from the Masons in 2008 and they've been uncovering hidden gems ever since. We are standing in the Masonic Temple, a 120 year old building, and this is the, what we like to refer to as our grand foyer. It's a thrill to come into this building all the time and be reminded of how rich and beautiful the culture and heritage is here in Newfoundland. Peter's favorite part of the temple is upstairs. In, in it's closed to the public. All right, so welcome to the Grand Lodge Room, we have the All-Seeing Eye, which is a symbol of the Masons, the mosaic tile. During rituals, Freemasons would walk over the tile to complete their initiation. The space also houses an old pipe organ from 1883. The Crosby family donated it to the Masons in the early 1900s. I think it was on their fifth of 13 children that Mrs. Crosby said the children are going to destroy this organ. It's not in the greatest of shape. And just around the corner. This is the part of the building that everybody wants to see. Even if they don't know anything about the Masonic Temple, they will always say, don't you have a dungeon or something? And in fact, we do. It's called the Chamber of Reflection. It said that any aspiring Mason would be sent down here to reflect on his past and consider his future journey as a Freemason. In the Alert dark, button. alone. Salt. Peter and Kathy have also found treasures hidden within the walls and beneath the floors, like this bundle tucked between the floorboards of an old cubby hole. When we opened it up, heaven knows what's on it. It looks like it's soiled. Look at that. It's like a Templar Society robe. Among other things they've come across are decades-old dance cards, cigarette packs, bird seeds, and, they swear, ghosts. 
Megan Kwan, CBC News, St. John's. I thought they told us to dress up and look good tonight. I dressed up. I dressed up. I don't know about you. Things slowly improving and uh, not a bad evening on the way. And that's the good news, Debbie. How are we going to get all this work done? It's going to take a long time. I'll be here all night. I, I put on my best attire and then you come dressed like this. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, I forgot my next line. You're supposed to grab me, smother me, and wrap me, you dumb <laughs> Time to meet our Young Athlete of the Day. This is Lola Woodman from New Harbor. Lola is a very active four-year-old gymnast, and not just that, she also swims, skates, plays soccer, and dances. Sounds busy. Congratulations, Lola. Keep up the great work. You're today's Young Athlete of the Day. Hello again. Hello. <laughs> this is the easiest day I've ever been here. <laughs> People are going to be, he's on again? <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about me. You won't see these in Nova Scotia. Nope. No. Yeah, Look it is something that uh, you'll miss, these gorgeous videos. Yeah, this was taken uh, along Iceberg Alley by uh, Mike Windsor of Newfoundland Photo Tours. So thank you so much for sending this in. Just stunning. Wow. Are they, they going to make you fly a drone in your new job? Or? <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably have... be up for it. Yeah, I would. Here's a couple of uh, comments. Kelly Butt says, I wish all the best to Ryan Snowden on his last day on CBCNL. And Zach Snow says, all the best to Ryan with his new opportunity for CBCNS. What is Newfoundland's loss is Nova Scotia's gain. Thank you for 10 years of your meteorology. Newfoundland is going to miss you. And Carolyn Pike says, anyone else feel like a family member is moving away? Yes, yes we do. <laughs> Wishing you all the best, uh, Ryan Snodden. 
Newfoundland and Labrador will miss you. Paul Warford, uh, fond farewell to Ryan over at uh, CPCNL on his last day. When you had to hear about frost warnings in June, <laughs> they were somehow easier to handle coming from him. Good luck in Halifax, my love. You'll never have it as good. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks to Paul. Uh, Paul and I worked together a little bit with his uh, comedy show there. He's a great comedian. Uh, Kelly Butt is, uh, of course, a great contributor on the NL Weather Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. uh, great fellow. We've had lots of chats uh, over the last uh, 10 years. So um, thank you to everybody who's been reaching out. It's truly been, uh, been awesome to hear from you all. Okay. I guess I better do the forecast. Yeah. <laughs> I think I better do my job now. Uh, we do have to talk again quickly about the weekend, just to recap in case you missed it. And let's have a little look into next week and see, are we finally going to warm up? Well, we will have a little bit of uh, warmer weather, certainly better than the last week, uh, but uh, it's uh, not really looking summer-like per se. We are watching, again, this is our main weather player for the weekend, spinning up into, uh, into Labrador, uh, rain rolling into western Newfoundland as we speak, then central, then eastern parts. There's that snow mixing in along the north Labrador coast. It'll mix down towards Happy Valley Goose Bay where we will have some flurry chances by Saturday evening, continuing into Sunday. Sunday, certainly the pick of the weekend on the island. There are those scattered uh, Shower chances that I talked about down the northeast coast uh, into St. John's by late Sunday. But again, uh, uh, isolated and not uh, talking about a washout by any stretch, and they are for the later parts of Sunday. Now for Monday, it's a pretty quiet start on the island. We are watching our next system. It's going to be diving in from the northwest, Labrador first, and this is the long-range look. Looks like the potential for some wet snow on the backside of this one as well into Labrador City by Tuesday evening. Newfoundland will, I think, will be quiet to start Tuesday into Wednesday, though. Our next system will track in with some showers, and it will be holding hands with another system that does look set to roll in as we roll into the Thursday time period. So an active pattern looks to continue. Area of high pressure off to the north, not ruling out that that may dive down and keep this late week system off to the south, but right now, it looks like we will be clipped with more shower chances for Thursday into Friday, although a clearing trend possible beyond that uh, into the weekend, which would we would be even better. Here's how uh, the next seven then plays out. We are talking about uh, temperatures again, riding a little bit cooler than where they should be for this time of year. That double digit mark may be closer to the mid teens by Wednesday. But of course, we will see some showers rolling in at that point as well. But Sunday into Monday, not looking too bad, so at least we can get out and enjoy a little bit there. Into ha Labrador and Happy Valley Goose Bay in particular, watch for those flurries mixing in on Sunday. After that, it's certainly a warming trend into the long range and closer to seasonal by the end of next week. Labrador West, we're talking about showers in the mix for the uh, Monday uh, time period. Possibly, as I said, mixing in with those flurries for Tuesday into uh, into Western Labrador as well. Uh, I will miss saying flurry. And I'm going to miss you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, buddy. Thank you. I mean, he came in on his day off. <laughs> it truly means a lot. Uh, and we'll have uh, your viewer picture coming up at the uh, end of the show.
as you know, Friday means a tradition around here. Uh, let's find out who's uh, celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And as Ryan called him when he was brand new here. The happy happens. <laughs> have a look. <laughs> Happy 50th wedding anniversary yesterday to Wayne and Ruby White. Happy 50th anniversary today to Frank and Minnie Bond of Frenchman's Cove. Nora Penny of Grand Falls, Windsor will be celebrating her 92nd birthday on Sunday. We're told she's still an active community volunteer and still driving. Happy anniversary to Anne Marie and Ambrose O'Brien of Paradise. It's their 50th anniversary today. Happy 53rd anniversary yesterday to this special couple, Elaine and Churchill Schaffler of St. Augustine, Quebec. They say they watch Here and Now every night, so thanks for that. Happy 90th birthday to Wilmot Morgan of Port de Grey from family and friends. Birthday greetings to Jenny Price of Grand Bank. She celebrated her 95th birthday on June 2nd. Charles Moores of Paradise is turning 101 tomorrow. Happy birthday. Happy 54th anniversary to George and Mary Bercy of St. John's. Happy 65th anniversary to Stuart and Cindy Button of Mount Pearl, but they're now staying at their summer home in Greens Pond. Happy 59th anniversary to Bob and Emily Bailey in Southlands. They celebrated on June 5th. Happy 54th anniversary to Tom and Linda Hollihan of Paradise. That is, of course, Pasadena. Happy 54th wedding anniversary to Dougald and Margaret Warren of Stephenville. They celebrated on the 6th. 50th anniversary greetings going out to John and Phyllis Pretty of Chapel Arm. Congratulations. Helma Day of Cornerbrook is celebrating her 90th birthday today. Hope you have a great one. Mary and Reg Adams from St. John's are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary today. Happy 95th birthday to George Burden of Blackhead Conception Bay. Happy 91st birthday, Jean Hilliard from Topsail in CBS. Happy 58th anniversary to Daryl and Joanne Torville of Rogers Cove, Gander Bay. Joanne is also celebrating her birthday. Happy 91st birthday to Marion Pickett of Centerville, Bonavista Bay. Marion celebrated her birthday with family and friends on June 5th. George Evans of CBS is turning 90 June 11th. Happy birthday. Minnie McDonald celebrated her 96th birthday on the 7th. She's from Colonet but now lives in Kellegrews. Birthday greetings going out to Bertha Noble of St. Anthony. She celebrated her 92nd birthday June 6th. Happy birthday to Mildred Kennedy in Clark's Beach, who will be celebrating her 92nd birthday on the 12th. Best wishes to Dawn and Barb Harris of St. John's, who celebrated their golden anniversary June 7th. Congratulations to Elias and Norma Gosling of Dunville, now living in St. John's. They're celebrating 62 years of marriage. Happy 63rd anniversary tomorrow to John and Ruby Butt from Freshwater Carbonier. Congratulations to Mary and George Golan. They were married in Carbonier 50 years ago, but now live in San Diego, California. Happy 50th anniversary, Graham and Emily Goss of Whitburn. Best wishes to Len and Betty Hallwell, who celebrated their 60th anniversary on June 7th. Celebrating their 51st wedding anniversary today, Clarence and Ada Connolly of St. Philip's now in Kellegrews. Happy 59th anniversary to Walter and Blanche Collins of Hare Bay. They were married June 6th. Lewis and Nellie Chalk of Happy Valley Goose Bay celebrated their 55th anniversary on the 6th. Happy 50th anniversary to Nell and John Marr of Chamberlain's. Happy anniversary to Mac and Irma Wall of Gander who celebrated their golden anniversary June 7th. And happy 65th anniversary to Lester and Irene Green of Raleigh celebrating June 11th. Well, congratulations. A lot of people uh, eating cake in some of those photos, yes. I noticed, mm. right? We Good had segue. some cake uh, <laughs> earlier we in did. the day. Uh, compliments of Jonathan uh, Crow. I was, I was going to cut down oh. here, but that's no good. Isn't that amazing? It's a tornado cake. <laughs> it's fantastic. Or the storm chaser. 
with a cow and oh right, it's a twister. <laughs> yes, right. And a tree. Yep. As far as weather cakes go, like this, as far as cakes go, <laughs> this is uh, fa fantastic. What a job! Did he make it? No. <laughs> no, this was done by uh, Juanita Stamp, and uh, she runs Imagine That Cake Designs. So she did a great job and coming up with that. Jonathan Crow said he wanted it for Ryan. She was apparently very happy to be able to do it for Ryan and designed it herself. Great imagination. And it was delicious. It was delicious. Did you feel guilty sticking a knife in there? Well, I did. <laughs> I said, I can't cut it. Never said, cut it. <laughs> I had no choice. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, delicious. Fantastic. <sighs> There's so, a couple of minutes left. Is this I where the roast starts? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Any, uh, hey, listen, if you want to go for it, go yeah. for it now. You get to, uh, <laughs> not much time left. Yeah. Well, there is one thing you can roast them for. Is yep. that one of your first mistakes when you came oh, here? Oh, mispronounced yeah. the classic one. Yeah, we're going to tell the story, the gumbo story. Um, we mentioned it last night. So when I first arrived here, I, I, you can uh, talk to Annie. I prided myself on knowing all of the place names. I'd go home at night. I'd study the map. And uh, for whatever reason, <laughs> one night there was heavy rain tracking through Central. And I said, if you're in the gumbo region, <laughs> watch out. Heavy rain coming through. And... <laughs> Yes, in New Orleans, right? So, <laughs> Joey Smallwood, the moment you did that. No. Cool. To this day, ten year, almost 10 years ago, st people still bring that up to me. Yeah. Yeah. We love to tease them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great gumbo today, son. <laughs> anyway, Ryan, I just want to say it's, it's very rare you get somebody who in meteorology who gets the science and the television. Mm -hmm. This guy is one of the best, and it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you to everybody who's reached out. Um, you know, 10 years is a long time for sure. Uh, we, Annie and I came here as CFAs, uh, but we feel like we're leaving as Newfoundlanders. Well, you've got two so Newfoundlanders taking true. them with you. You that's are true. embraced And I by have everyone. to say that what you see is what you get. This is the genuine, real deal, hardworking, funny, he is a sweetheart, and I know your mom and dad are watching, Jim and Colleen. That's right. You did yeah. a good job. Thank you so Aww. much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you to, uh, to everybody who's been reaching out. Good luck. Good luck. Pleasure Ryan. working We're with you guys you. and everybody here.